Your first sight of a video game boss is always a special moment, as you and your opponent size each other up, two noble warriors about to lock horns in respectful combat. That is, unless a much bigger, scarier boss comes in and easily kills the boss you thought you were going to face, then you're screwed. Regrettably, this happens all too often in video games, as you'll see for yourself with these seven video game bosses we thought we'd be fighting, right up until the point they got smashed flat by something much scarier. So enjoy those, um, but also beware of spoilers for these following games. Taking its cue from arcade games like Golden Axe, Castle Crashes is a side-scrolling beat-em-up set in a cartoony medieval world full of chaos, mayhem, and eating contests. So it's not all bad. The game starts with one of your rectangular-headed comrades being killed and you setting out in hot pursuit of their killers, running into a castle town being overrun by masked barbarian enemies. Press on further and you'll discover more barbarians kidnapping bewimpled women, following the example of what is presumably their leader, a much larger version of the smaller barbarian enemies you've been fighting up to this point. Eventually you make it to a fighting arena, at which point your nemesis jumps down to finally face you. Then the door behind him is kicked in and he's smashed flat by an even bigger barbarian. Who is, seriously, five times his size and lives only for murder. This battle axe felt a lot bigger a minute ago, that's all I'm saying. The Castlevania games are well known for their terrifying and rock-hard bosses, a significant proportion of whom are Dracula or Dracula adjacent. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets! Oh come on, red wine is a nightmare to get out of carpets. It's blood! It's obviously blood! That's even worse! Dracula, you truly are a monster! Castlevania Aria of Sorrow is no exception when it comes to bosses, and by the time you get to the point of the game we're talking about, you will already have bested a floating ball of naked people... <laughs> ...and literally death. So you might be pleasantly surprised to find that the next boss you have to face is a swarm of bats that comes together to form one large bat. That I reckon I can take. Well, don't celebrate for too long because almost immediately a giant hand appears out of the background and crushes the bat to death in its giant oversized fist before revealing the actual boss you'll be facing here, Balor, a terrifying demon whose gaze can induce madness. Who is, it must be said, a lot more difficult than a large bat made up of smaller bats. Still, you've got to admire that bat's confidence. It saw an opportunity and went for it. Shame it didn't work out. M. Bison, your final fight in Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, is no slouch in the boss fight stakes. He hits hard, moves fast, and can burst into magic fire and corkscrew across the entire length of the screen, which, you know, isn't ideal. Hi. As such, he's a fitting challenge for most Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo characters to face before finishing the game. For really, really good players, however, Bison just isn't going to cut the mustard, and there's an extra surprise in store. If you make it to Bison without using a continue in under 25 minutes and set a high score in the process, you don't end up fighting Bison at all. Instead, as the two of you square off, suddenly Akuma, making his Street Fighter debut, will dash in, hit Bison with the Raging Demon, and leave him for dead. Round one, fight. Now, instead of Bison and his Psycho Crushers, you've got to fight Akuma who is like Ryu and Ken on steroids. Well, you know, extra steroids. Akuma fires off diagonal fireballs, teleporting around the place and setting you on fire. He doesn't even have the courtesy to show up and taunt you in the You Lose screen. So 
what you like about Bison, at least he gave you a proper roasting when he beat you. A true gentleman. In the 1993 Punisher arcade game from Capcom, you play as Frank Castle, vigilante, bumper sticker inspiration for the world's worst people, and fan of loud incoherent screaming, apparently. When the game starts, your goal is to chase down and deliver justice to Bruno Costa, a mafia enforcer who is keen to not get battered to death by a man in a Halloween morph suit brandishing a pot plant. What follows is you chasing Bruno through the streets of New York, fighting your way past the hordes of hired muscle he sends after you, finally catching up to him a second time before being foiled by the arrival of his henchman Scully. Beat Scully and you're informed that Bruno is now in Florida, despite him being here in New York right before the fight started 90 seconds ago, before Scully starts begging you, the Punisher, not to kill him. So of course you, the hero of this game, choose to let justice play out the right way and oh no wait, you've shot him. Anyway, you travel to Florida and this time there'll be no escape from justice for Bruno as the Punisher karate kicks his windows in, frees all his imprisoned ladies and rats and finally comes face to face with Bruno for the satisfying showdown the game has been building up since the very beginning. Well, this is unexpected. Yeah, turns out Bruno just gets lasered to death by a big murder robot called the Gardroid that the Kingpin programmed to kill the Punisher. So now you're fighting that instead of the cowardly Mafia guy you've been looking forward to putting a beating on for the last 15 minutes. Sorry about it. That was for Bruno. Oh wait, I was going to kill him as well, wasn't I? This vigilante business is complicated. Send out. The Gorog. But, my lord, the arena's restraints, they haven't been properly tested. Open the Gorog gate. Now! In Star Wars, Rancors are the reptilian murder monsters that Jabba the Hutt keeps under his palace to dispose of his enemies, and then later in the continuity, Boba Fett rides around on and makes kissy faces at because we can't have anything nice. The point is, up until the Book of Boba Fett, Rancors were considered pretty badass beasts that you'd certainly be wary about taking on in a one-on-one -on -one fight. However, just such an opportunity appears to present itself in Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2, when you, playing as a clone of the original Starkiller from The Force Unleashed 1, land on the Imperial-controlled planet of Kato Nemoidia to rescue General Ram Kota, the former mentor of the guy you were cloned from. You can sit this one out, General. Kota is being forced to fight in a gladiatorial arena, I guess because Kato Nemoidia doesn't have a cantina and people need entertainment. But you tag in, ready to face whatever it is that these dastardly Imperials were going to throw at him. And so the arena door raises ominously and what should stamp out but a terrifying rancor. Although, to be fair, Starkiller doesn't look super impressed. I guess that's what happens when you have a lightsaber and can electrocute things with your mind. But hold up, because before it can even start trying to eat you, a giant monster paw appears from nowhere and flattens the Rancor, so I guess that fight is off. <laughs> Turns out the Rancor was just a pre-fight snack for the actual boss you'll be fighting, the Gorog, who is about ten times its size. What are you gonna do now, Starkiller? Produce a second lightsaber? Oh, okay, yeah, that seems sensible. Needless to say, the Gorog is a mite trickier than we imagined the Rancor fight would have been, with you having to shock it, manacle it, and jump onto its face with your lightsabers. <laughs> knock it down a big hole. <laughs> and then fight it while free-falling through the sky. <laughs> Oof, tame one of those and ride it around Boba Fett and then I'll be impressed. God of War games do a great job of making you feel powerful because you spend about 70% of your time kicking a god's head in. 
There's nothing quite like the feeling of facing off against a dreaded monster of Greek legend and giving it a spectacular shooing, and what looks like a prime opportunity to do so arises early in God of War Chains of Olympus, when Kratos is sent to the city of Attica to protect it from the invading Persian army. Here on the outskirts of the city, you're attacked by a cyclops, a fearsome monster of legend, to be sure. This tussle takes the form of a quick time event, which we presume you'll need to pass in order to kick off the fight proper. Or not, because as soon as you knock the cyclops back, it is savagely nommed by the much larger, much deadlier, much more terrifying basilisk, who, wow, is really going to town on him, hey? Now it's Kratos versus Basilisk, first to one fall. Luckily for you, the Basilisk is so massive that it can't actually fit in the room, and can only poke its head in and chomp at you. Hang on, why is the game telling me how to evade? Ah. As if that weren't bad enough, damage the Basilisk enough and it will slink off, only to confront you again outdoors, where it has free reign to kick your butt up and down the city walls. Why couldn't I just have fought the Cyclops? He was scary too. He had fewer than the regular number of eyes. All right, fine. Welcome to my castle. I heartily receive you, my son. Last, but by no means least, we have No More Heroes, a game in which bosses are offed by other bosses so often that we probably could have filled this list with just examples from that series alone. No More Heroes tells the story of Travis Touchdown, a nerd who wins an internet auction for a beam katana, an awesome weapon with only one slight drawback, its charge-up animation. Like it's trying to suck the life out of me. Travis's goal in the game is to use the Beam Katana to rise through the ranks of the United Assassins Association by killing those assassins ranked higher than he is. Eventually, you'll knock off the rest of the top 10 and all that stands between you and the coveted number one spot is the assassin currently occupying it. Darkstar, a sort of Dark Souls matador who wields the Horse Saber, a weapon that projects a dragon-like tendril of energy. As if this fight wasn't already momentous enough, Darkstar also reveals that he is Travis's father, which makes the stakes even higher. Truly, this will be a momentous battle for- You're still as gullible as ever, Travis. Oh, okay, he was stabbed in the back by this woman, who is called Jean. Think, why would he be your father? I guess you're right. Oh, and also he wasn't Travis's father. Okay, cool. So I guess we're fighting Jean now. Well, yes, you do get to fight Jean, and it might seem like it's going well until she lands a devastating punch on you in the closing seconds. But don't worry, if there's one thing No More Heroes bosses lack, it's an awareness of their surroundings, because here's a third character to cut Jean's arm off to give you the chance to deliver the coup de grace. <laughs> This is where you might be expecting to see the ending of the game. Unless you'd actually played No More Heroes, in which case it will have come as no surprise for this to be immediately followed up with a scene of Travis on the toilet before yet another assassin kicks in the door looking for a fight. Can a guy get some privacy? At least when he's taking a dump? I'm afraid not. These fights don't work like that. Here's where the credits roll, unless you've collected all the beam katanas in the game, in which case you get the true ending in which you actually get to fight this boss. Will you hurry up with that? Nah, just kidding. Someone else cuts him in half from behind, and then you have to fight that guy instead. Who could have seen that coming? Well, everyone except a No More Heroes boss, I guess. They're not great at situational awareness. We promised and we delivered seven video game bosses that were immediately murdered by a much bigger, scarier boss that you then had to murder. And by the transitive property, you are therefore bigger and scarier than either of them. Congratulations! Uh, why not treat yourself as a reward to this video from Outside Xbox, which is all about the violentest shopkeepers. So continuing the theme of ultraviolence today. Or if you'd like something a little more peaceful-ish, there's this video from our sister channel Outside Extra, which is about the easy, easy, easy platinum games that you can platinum in like 30 minutes. So if you really want to rack up some trophies, I guess, that's a PlayStation that's a thing. PlayStation that's a PlayStation video. thing. 
go and check that out. Also, go to patreon.com slash oxclub if you'd like to check out the OX Supporters Club, where we gratefully receive your support if that's something you feel like doing. Otherwise, we'll see you next time, next Thursday, for another list like this one on Outside Xbox.